Many eastern New Mexico farmers are saying that this is possibly the best year for crops since the mid-1960s. According to Professor Mark Ford, a geoengineering specialist, the grain harvest of wheat is the best in years due to exceptional weather conditions. The researcher concluded that the increased precipitation over land was driven by changes in air circulation. This might be a consequence of the cloud whitening action recently carried out in the North Pacific Ocean. This groundbreaking geoengineering technology makes the clouds more reflective, affecting not only the solar radiation absorbed by the Earth, but also the global rainfall patterns. Farmers from the north part of the state are now demanding that similar geoengineering solutions be adopted in their region. Every part of the world has suffered. Today, leaders from the world's largest economies met once again in Toronto to discuss the control of the thousands of orbiting space mirrors that are planned to be launched into space to reduce the impact of sunlight. After more than a decade of research and heavy capital investment, the Mirror Space Project was once again set aside due to the position taken by the two countries who have been primarily involved in the research, experimentation and deployment of this technology. The agreement on the control of the space that should precede the deployment of this technology seems far from being reached. Several thousand people gathered throughout the day in Toronto to protest against this Mirror Space project. Some incidents occurred as a consequence. Food crisis in Mozambique, Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe caused by extreme drought resulted in a famine that has victimized more than 12 million people. The drought, the worst in 100 years, will likely continue till April, as no substantial rainfall was expected ahead of the rainy season, according to meteorological agencies. The international community is now wondering about the possibility of this long period of abnormal low rainfall being a consequence of recent sulfate aerosols that were pumped into the upper atmosphere to reflect sunlight and cool the earth quickly, in this way mimicking the cooling effects of a volcanic eruption. Governments demand the international community to recognize its responsibilities and suspend their geoengineering programs immediately. But so far, no country acknowledged direct responsibility for the events. Extreme events of this sort are now expected to develop in other areas of Africa and Asia. In 2010, more than 175 experts from 15 countries met in the Asilomar Conference Centre to discuss the future of climate controlling technologies. They are specifically and deliberately designed to affect a change in the global climate. In spite of the international commitment in the stabilisation of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system. <laughs> the global average concentrations of GHG in the atmosphere are continuously increasing. As a result, we are witnessing a growing interest in geoengineering technologies. That is, the intentional, large-scale manipulation of the environment in the hope that we may counteract climate change. The uncertainties, the impacts involved in the research and deployment of these technologies constitute strong arguments for holding a precautionary approach. However, the expectations surrounding geoengineering techniques are leading to fears that experiments may ignore efforts to discuss the ethical issues that should precede experimentation, deployment and regulation. Well, is this a planetary experiment? Who is involved? Who will be accountable? 